Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear learners. This is a video for the subject of education for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Educational Technology Part 2. In this lecture, we will be discussing a topic related to communication and interaction. And this topic is on Flanders Interaction Analysis. This video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or reviewer of this video is Dr. Savita Kaushal from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTHYM Prabha Channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan. Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today, we are going to have a discussion on the topic related to communication and interaction. And this lecture is going to cover the Flanders interaction analysis. Let us start the discussion first with the objectives. The objectives of this session are to discuss the meaning and definition of interaction analysis, to delineate the different systems of interaction analysis and to elaborate the Flanders interaction analysis along with its advantages and limitations. Let us start with the meaning and definition of interaction analysis techniques. So we can actually make a, a very clear statement when we say that the competency of a teacher at any level of teaching may be adjusted through the degree of effectiveness of this teacher's teaching, which is objectively assessed through his or her classroom behavior or interaction. And it may, be, uh, it, it may um, basically provide a reliable assessment of what goes on or inside the classroom in terms of teaching and learning. And such type of analysis is basically considered to be uh, called as the interaction analysis. If we try to define it in some very perfect uh, statements or in clear uh, terms, we can say that interaction analysis refers to a technique consisting of objective and systematic observation of the classroom events for the study of the teacher's behavior and the process of interaction going inside the classroom. Basically, this process of interaction analysis helps a teacher to bring desirable modification in the behavior uh, of, of that particular teacher and also to improve the interaction of this teacher with the students. So it is a kind of uh, analysis which helps the teacher to make, make the process of teaching uh, very much effective. The teacher can modify his or her behavior on the basis of this particular analysis, which we consider to be as the interaction analysis. So a system of interaction analysis essentially consists of the process of encoding and decoding. So wherever there is encoding, the next will be decoding. So while encoding uh, is considered to help in recording the classroom events in a meaningful way, what does this decoding do? Basically, decoding is used in arranging the data into a useful display and then analyzing the results in order to study the patterns of teaching behavior or the behavior of this teacher and the classroom interactions which are happening at the time of teaching by this particular teacher. So interaction analysis in this way works as a standardized observation tool and analysis technique for identifying the patterns of the behavior of a teacher and analyzing the classroom interaction between the teacher and the students. So basically this entire process gives a cue about how, what type of 
interaction is happening inside the classroom of a teacher with the students to whom the teacher is teaching so this is something which we can consider to be the interaction analysis so what is the systems of interaction analysis what are basically the systems of interaction analysis we all can consider this point that as a result of various researches over the years more than 100 systems are available at present for the analysis of teacher behavior and classroom interaction and in the present time even we have got many mobile apps and there are many systems standardized systems which can be considered to be um, used for the classroom interaction analysis or the teachers behavior analysis but richard l ober and uh, many others in 1971 have tried to classify all these systems into two groups what are these two groups the first one is the sign and the second one is category what both of these mean so the first system given by richard l ober the first uh, uh, type of uh, the group is sign and the sign system comprises a list of behaviors in this system uh, basically the observer simply checks or marks in some way each behavior that occurs during a given period of time and this particular activity is basically regardless of the frequency of its occurrence the behavior is marked only once during the observation period so this one is the sign system the next system which is the category system basically in the category system the teacher behavior is first divided into various behavior units each unit is then classified into categories and in this system at regular intervals of the observation period and this particular uh, observation period uh, within each 3 uh, seconds of duration basically this observation period can uh, vary uh, the task of an observer consists of determining in what category the observed behavior falls so the, the observer actually has a keen eye and uh, like every few minutes or few seconds whatever is the observable uh, period which uh, this which is decided uh, before the process starts the observation is taken this uh, person also takes notes of the category number the category number and here a behavior may be encoded as many times it occurs which is contrary to the sign system where it is recorded only once so the sequence of occurrence of various behaviors also is recorded here in this system or which is considered to be the category system so this is uh, the two uh, basic and uh, very important categories of interaction analysis system now let us discuss the flanders interaction analysis the flanders system of interaction analysis represents a very good example of uh, the system of interaction analysis this system was developed by ned a flanders in the year 1959 at the university of minnesota and this was in the form of a teacher training technique basically for teaching uh, uh, the teachers or training the teachers this was considered to be a technique which is later on uh, told as the or uh, was popularized as the flanders interaction analysis this involves categorization of all the sets of possible verbal behaviors of a teacher in the classroom while interacting with the students and there are many other things which we will be discuss uh, like discussing here in this uh, particular session so in the flanders interaction analysis there are many categories let us see what are these in total there are 10 categories of verbal behavior here in this flanders interaction analysis system 
and these uh, 10 categories are grouped into three major sections the first major section is the teacher talk the second is the student talk and the third is the silence or confusion you can find a table right now in front of you which is go which is actually providing you the cues uh, which are related to all these three major categories first let us discuss the teacher talk this is the first category and in this first category of teacher talk basically we have got seven categories like the major category is teacher talk and under it there are seven categories the first four categories belong to indirect influence indirect influence and the letter three basically belong to the direct influence the category of indirect influence covers those verbal behaviors of the teacher which give the students greater opportunity to respond or maximize their freedom of action what are these under the indirect influence the uh, the uh, those categories uh, the four categories the first one is accepts feelings the second is praises or encourages number 3 is accepts or uses the ideas of the students and number 4 is ask questions so this is the uh, the four basic things which are considered to be the indirect influence of the teacher talk now under the teacher talk the second one is the second category or major category is direct influence under which we have got three of those uh, other sub categories so like we have seen in the indirect influence case on the contrary to the indirect influence the category here the direct influence category basically influences the exhibits those verbal behaviors of the teacher which tend to restrict or minimize the students freedom of action what are the, these uh, particular uh, features the first here which in this uh, table comes at the fifth uh, point is lecturing so as and when the lecturing starts basically now the teacher has started influencing the students directly then the next is giving directions which is again the part of the direct influence and then number 7 and here it is coming at the third level or the third point is criticizing or justifying authority so these three are uh, basically the direct influence under the teacher talk next is the category which is considered to be the major category which is considered to be the pupil talk this is again divided into two categories the the basic third section you can say third section which is the silence and confusion is at the last but here in this pupil talk the two category categories which we are seeing right now here in this table the first one is response and the point which comes un under this response category is the pupil talk response means when the the pupil uh, or the students basically give the responses in the form of talk the second one is initiation under it we can say that the point which comes is pupil talk initiation or when the students actually initiate their talk and then the last one is the silence or confusion where out of confusion the students are not in a position to give any answer or to initiate uh, any response and that is why they all remain silent or which can be considered to be the state of confusion 
so this third major category which is silence and confusion under it we have got again the silence or confusion where we can find that the students right now are not responding and that uh, can be taken up as that uh, the silence is uh, somehow giving an idea that the students are confused that is why they are not giving any response so these 10 categories uh, which underlie uh, the components or the behaviors of the interaction uh, analysis these are all categorized by flanders and this is something which is very very popular and it is uh, used a lot for making the interaction analysis of the classrooms of different uh, levels so this is uh, the crux of flanders interaction analysis especially the categories so flanders interaction analysis is considered to be very important in the case of communication and interaction analysis let us see a few of those advantages which this particular system of interaction analysis has the number one um, advantage is that it is a reliable and objective technique of observing and analyzing the verbal behavior of a teacher and classroom interaction the second advantage is that it may help in determining the pattern and flow of teaching behavior then the next is it helps in understanding analytically what in fact goes on in the classroom process then by the use of this particular system uh, the student teachers or the pupil teachers may practice and learn many new desirable teaching behaviors which are um, we can say that at times in the traditional teaching uh, is not very much known to them so they, if they are following the flanders interaction analysis and all the uh, points the 10 points then they can actually practice somehow a better interaction with their students in the classroom then being a potential tool of the feedback it helps in acquiring the desirable pattern of teaching and modifying a person's teaching behavior next is is this particular system adds and supplements the training techniques such as the micro teaching and the team teaching uh, technique which is very popular nowadays then it can be used for carrying out research in the area of teaching teaching behavior teaching psychology and pre service and in service education of teachers so in this way we can say that it's a good system and it is utilized for uh, making the analysis of the interactions happening in the inside the classroom in a very proper way once anything is having certain advantages uh, it is not very much clean of those limitations which can be there so the flanders system of interaction analysis also suffers from some of the drawbacks and limitations what are these drawbacks and limitations let us see one by one so the first one or the first limitation is that the system concentrates on verbal behavior and does not describe the classroom interaction or the teacher behavior in its totality some behaviors are always overlooked which might be important too like we by doing this analysis uh, we can see that there are certain uh, behaviors of the teacher or the student uh, which are not considered very important but at times uh, those behaviors are very important and if they are overlooked maybe in future there are many problems which can arise so this is something which uh, gives it a kind of drawback that there are certain uh, observable behaviors which are overlooked then the next is the system being uh, content free does not incorporate various essential steps of teaching a particular subject and therefore concerned behaviors have to be uh, very uh, you can say uh, categorized uh, in a very arbitrary manner by the observer so because 
the content is not very much there the content uh, like this is something which is content neutral this analysis technique is very much content neutral like in case of a science class the same method is observed in case of a social science or arts or any of the subjects the same type of interaction analysis techniques are going to be uh, used so because of this at times we can see that the behaviors which we we can observe in the science class by the students and the teachers may not be observed in an art class and or in a fine arts class but here the system is actually not giving any difference so this is the uh, important drawback then this technique focuses a great like it 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 focuses a lot um it gives a lot of attention on direct and indirect teacher influence and the teacher talk and these are provided uh, you you have seen that uh, in the third and the fourth categories so this is again uh, not very much uh, considered like uh, it's not very good to be considered because teachers talk like every time when when the teacher is um, giving some sort of instructions or talking like we want to make a classroom which is somehow student centric and that's why this particular point where the teacher talk is very much uh, influential and here uh, categorized for uh, for many a times it is considered to be a drawback in the classroom interaction in the form of pupil pupil interaction does not find any place in the system so we are seeing nowadays the peer group evaluation systems and also we are going for all those group discussions and where where the the discussions which are happening between the students the first student is interacting with the second and so on the chain goes on so this type of interaction is not considered at all here in the system which is again a lacuna the process of tallying constructing a matrix and interpreting the matrix prove uneconomical in terms of time labor and money because it has got like if you follow this entire system you will see that a lot of uh, calculation tallying then uh, creating of matrix and all are there which at times are typical for a person and invest uh, investment of a lot of time and labor is uh, actually involved so this is the next uh, lacuna the next is that its use requires highly trained reliable and competent observer or interpreter which are always in acute shortage because it's a very complicated uh, calculative technique that's why very less people proficient people can be um, it is possible only for them to do the, this particular analysis technique and that is why um, basically at times there are very less people who can do this technique who can use this technique so it is uh, again a limitation then it does not provide value judgments about good and bad teaching behaviors then there are certain activities such as demonstrating an experiment in science then model reading in language then map and chart reading in social studies or social sciences they do not find appropriate classification in this particular system because it's talking about all those talk and lecturing and all those methods while these activities they are all the compulsory components of the classroom and the system is not talking about these particular components this is again a lacuna only one category has been provided to silence and confusion and equating uh, like when we are seeing a classroom when we are observing a classroom uh, the silence with the confusion is not appropriate at times maybe there are times when the students are keeping their silence because the teacher has asked to to be silent the teacher has asked them to be silent and they are not confused because of that confusion they are not silent because because the uh, the explanation is going on or there are they are doing certain activity that's why they are silent so here in this system 
no attempts have been taken or have been made to classify the silence as the purposive and non purposive which is a serious drawback so this is again a very important drawback which we have to see in this system the fourth category which is related with asking questions does not classify this like the the types of questions which are to be asked so therefore it becomes very difficult to interpret or analyze the teacher behavior in its true form or the basis of the observation of this particular category where the asking of questions is actually uh, the point but what type of questions are to be asked what what should be the the way in which the, student, the teacher should ask the question that is not actually explained so this is again a drawback so we can see that in in this uh, like while seeing all these uh, drawbacks the flanders system of interaction analysis suffers from some serious drawbacks and limitations and for doing away with these difficulties there are many attempts which have been made to suggest suitable modifications in this system and uh, these uh, the other systems have be uh, become popular there are there are many other systems which are uh, available for doing the interaction analysis but still the flanders system of interaction analysis is being used and uh, it is considered to be very important system in case of uh, uh, making the interaction analysis in the classroom situations so let us try to summarize what we have studied today the term interaction analysis refers to a technique consisting of objective and systematic observation of the classroom events for the study of the teachers classroom behavior and the process of interaction going inside the classroom the system of interaction analysis helps a teacher to bring desirable modification in the behavior of this teacher and to improve the interaction uh, with the teacher's students for making the uh, process of teaching and learning more effective and purposeful both for the teacher and the students then uh, we have also seen that there exists more than hundreds of systems of interaction analysis but flanders system of interaction analysis is no, uh, known as the most popular technique used for the analysis of the teacher's behavior but here in in this case we can say that uh, the behavior which is being uh, analyzed is verbal only here in the flanders interaction analysis and interaction going on in the classroom at a particular teaching learning situation is only considered here in the flanders interaction analysis this system tries to categorize all the sets of possible behaviors while interacting with uh, the students uh, in the 10 basic categories which are divided into three major sections these major sections are teacher talk student talk and silence or confusion the application and utilization of flanders interaction analysis mainly involves three major steps the first one is observation and recording of the classroom events the second is construction of the instruction matrix and the third is interpretation of the interaction matrix however for uh, for many reasons this system suffers from some serious drawbacks and limitations and for doing away with these difficulties there are a few of those alternative systems of interaction analysis uh, which uh, are involved and uh, uh, for for making the analysis the evolution of these systems uh, have been for uh, like seen for time to time and few of them uh, include the reciprocal reciprocal category system uh, it we Uh, equivalent talk category system and the regional college of education uh, ajmer system uh, which are again uh, some of the substitutes which are given uh, uh, which can be used on the place of flender system of uh, interaction analysis we have also seen some of the advantages and those uh, lacuna the drawbacks which are there and which makes this system uh, a little bit of uh, suffering from some 
drawbacks but uh, like seeing all these uh, advantages and the uh, drawbacks we can make a uh, conclusion that uh, the system is having a lot of good things as well as some bad things and uh, that is why because of the good uh, things because of the, uh, the the observations which can be made by this interaction analysis system yet it is considered to be the most popular technique for you for doing the interaction analysis in the classrooms so this is all for uh, uh, interaction analysis topic and uh, when uh, it comes to uh, to discuss on the flender system of interaction analysis these are few of those references and links which were used while creating the session for creating this particular lecture. You can also go ahead and read more and enhance your knowledge and capacity of doing interaction analysis in the real life situation. For today, this is all and let us meet each other with each other in another session, another time, some other day. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Dear students, you are watching a video on communication and interaction and in this lecture we discussed about Flanders interaction analysis. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.